So let's go very slowly through them. Mumps or epidemic parotitis is a viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing, by sneezing and coughing in school and on the bus going to school, etc. And mumps has a long incubation period. That is, all viruses have a long incubation period. So if someone were to ask you, what is the incubation period of mumps? All you have to think about that is a viral illness and you will say two to three weeks and you'd be right. If it's a bacterial illness, of course, it's gonna be days, one to three days. So you need not be specific about these precise dates. Mumps causes enlargement of the parotid glands. Sometimes the submandibular glands. And patients present with a swollen face and pain and fever and perhaps a sore throat. And be generalized lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the draining lymph nodes. And sometimes difficulty with swallowing. The important thing for us is though, when you look inside the mouth, you may see that the orifice of the Stenson's duct or the parotid duct is inflamed on one side or on both sides. And that is about its sole oral manifestation. You remember, of course, that mumps causes meningoencephalitis, rarely, that is inflammation of the meninges and that of the brain, or orchitis, inflammation of the testes, or pancreatitis. But those things are not going to happen in your dental chair. And I'm only mentioning them to you for completeness. Mumps is protected by vaccine, vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service, the NHS in 1988. And since its introduction, the mumps measles rubella vaccine, it has greatly decreased the number of kids developing mumps. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids start school. Measles is a very serious and a highly contagious viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing, by sneezing and coughing in school and on the playground and on the bus going to school, etc. And because it's a viral illness, it has a long incubation period. So a couple of weeks of incubation period and you'd be right. This is a condition in which young children present and become very fretful and ill and miserable with fever and with generalized lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the draining lymph nodes and with discharging eyes and ears and what is called the macular papilla rash. The important thing for us is though, when you look in the mouth, you may see things called coplic spots. These are just small salivary retention glands which become inflamed and show up as little grains of salt on the inside of the cheek opposite the molars. And the important thing about these coplic spots are that they come on before the rash. They come on before the maculopapular rash. So if you're a clever dentist like your good self, and you see a child who is fretful and ill and miserable, perhaps coming down with fever and a bit of a cold, and you look inside their mouth and you see these little grains of salt with perhaps a red halo around them, you see these coplic spots on the inside of the cheek, opposite the molars. You look at the mom and say, mother, I think your child is coming down with measles. And you probably will be right but it's best not to say anything and refer them to the GP because as you recall, this is a notifiable disease and the GP will have to inform the health authority because of it. And you remember, of course, apart from a miserable, fretful and an ill child covered in a rash, measles is characterized by inflammation of the ears, otitis media and that of encephalitis inflammation of the brain and a funny thing called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. But again, those things are not going to happen in your dental chair. And I've only mentioned them to you for completeness. 
measles is protected by vaccine vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service, the good old NHS, in the United Kingdom in 1988. The mumps, measles, rubella vaccine, and since its introduction, it has greatly cut down the number of children needing hospital treatment and developing measles. And I strongly advise all parents in the United Kingdom to follow the guidelines set by the National Health Service. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids start school. German measles is a viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing. And because it's a viral illness, it has a long incubation period. So a couple of weeks of incubation period and you'll be right. And patients develop fever and generalized lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the draining lymph nodes. It hasn't got much of an oral manifestation. So we pass it over, except to say that there is a rash, a rash very much like the rash of measles, a but is a fine macular papillar rash. And unlike the rash of measles which persists, this one clears up real quick. Three to four days. German measles, of course, is important, as you recall, if a pregnant woman has rubella, because there are serious consequences affecting the fetus if the pregnant woman has German measles. Things like cataract, deafness, encephalitis, etc. And therefore, there is a vaccination program for young ladies leaving school because of chance of getting pregnant. German measles is protected by vaccine. Vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service in the United Kingdom in 1988. The mumps, measles, rubella vaccine. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids go to school.